If you like my videos, please click on the like button and share it with your friends. Also, subscribe for the new videos. Okay, so our next topic is noise pollution. First of all, what is no noise? Noise, it may refers to the loud sound created by humans or machines that disrupt the environment and normal living of the organisms. So, it is the sound created by any of the machine or human beings which is not making the environment little better for the human beings or it disturbs the environment. It disturbs the environment. So, it can also be considered as the unwanted noise damped into the atmosphere that leads to the discomfort and health hazards to the human beings or anybody else. So, that can be considered as noise pollution so these are unwanted noise noise the word is derived from the latin word called nausea and the meaning of the word is sound that loud sound that may cause sickness so it is a loud sound that may cause sickness noise is generally measured in terms of decibel and represented as small d and capital b decibel is the unit for noise while the hertz is the frequency is the unit for the frequency hertz is the unit for frequency what are the sources of noise first it can be divided into two part one is natural and one is man-made so natural sources includes the violent volcanic eruptions so volcanic eruption produces large amount of noise then there are thunder then there are furious storms then rain and everything produces some amount of noise also man-made noises are including domestic appliances such as mixers washing machines telephones etc these are all domestic appliances which can make noise then industries such as mills and factories which keeps on running some kind of machines they always keeps on making some noise transportations like automobiles trains ships aircrafts and constantly honking by drivers all these are producing large amount of noise on the streets on the roads and everywhere entertainment devices such as radio television bursting of crackers and playing loud music during the social gathering and festivals these are also kind of noise so what can what range of the noise can be considered as good and what can what is the range of the noise for not a for a bad or it can be considered as noise pollution so for the normal hearing of the noise of the sound the actual uh, unit or actual range is approximately up to 75 decibel of intensity so in this table you can see that if the noise is below 75 decibel it can be considered as a better or or sound it can be considered as the normal sound while the so sound above 75 decibel can be considered as noise pollution so in this case if you are doing a normal breathing it can produce up to 10 decibel of noise soft whispering produces 20 to 30 decibel while library they are having almost 40 decibel of noise Peaceful restaurant can have up to 50 decibel of noise while normal conser conservation conversion can have up to 55 to 60 decibel of noise. So up to this range it's okay. But if you increase the range of the if you increase the noise such as automobiles they produces up to 90 decibel of noise which can be considered as noise pollution. So automobiles, buses, truck they produce up to 90 decibel of noise. Then it comes to the train whistles which is producing almost 110 decibel of noise. Loud, loud stereo can produce up to 115. Siren or uh, siren of the ambulance may produce 150 decibel of noise while commercial jet 140 and jet aircraft launch, launching produces 150 while rocket engine can produce up to 190 decibel of noise. So these are not good for the human health. So what are the main effect of the noise pollution? There are two types of effects of noise pollution. One is auditory effect, effect related to the hearing power and second is non-auditory effect which is related to the health not the listening power of a person. So what about the auditory effect? The safe limit for the sound is up to 75 decibel. For the human beings it is up to 75 decibel. Any sound measuring above 75 decibel can in can cause discomfort to the human ears and can let lead to hearing impairment 
when exposed for long duration then this can uh, damage your ears also sounds above 150 decibel can cause instant deafness also in human beings so it should be below 75 decibels and what are the non auditory auditory effects first of all noise has ill effect on human psychology and mental functions it affects heartbeats peripheral circulations and breathing pattern also it also has effect on behavior such as annoyance intermittent or disturbed sleep or it is also called as insomnia irritability headache tiredness increased heartbeat and hypertension and noise also affect the productivity uh, or reproduction of human beings and this is also the cause of heart attack nowadays so how can we control the noise pollution there are two ways of controlling noise pollution one is suppression at the source from where it is produced we can suppress over there or we can control at the receivers end so for controlling at the receivers end we have a large number of devices like earplugs like ear protection aids like uh, noise helmets like headphones etc should be used so that you can protect your ears from the large amount of noise and what about the suppression at the source first of all we should improve the method of working and design or fabrication of the quieter machines we should go for the quieter machines there are possibility that we can reduce the noise from the mixer from the washing machine from other devices so we should go for the quieter machines secondly proper lubrication and better maintenance of the machines always add some quantity of the lubricant to the joints so that the joints when they rub they don't produce the noise so this should be done also installation of noisy machines in a soundproof chamber all the noisy machines should be surrounded by the soundproof chambers there are possibility of some soundproof chambers which is not so costly also and that can be used to avoid the noise then use silencers to control the noise from automobile exhaust generally motorbikes and all the vehicles they are having the silencer so we must use the silencer so that it is not producing too much of noise covering noise producing machines part with sound absorbing material so all the soft materials like clothes papers etc can be considered as the sound absorbing material so we should protect the no uh, we should cover the noise producing material or the machines with these soft materials and then finally reducing the noise by vibration damping what is the meaning of vibration damping generally when there is a machine moving and it is vibrating so the noise is generally produced by the vibration and when we keep this machine on a rubber platform then the vibration is reduced and at the end noise can also be reduced with the help of vibration damping so these are some of the ways by which we can reduce the noise at the source there are few more methods like zoning zoning means we can declare one area one particular area as a quiet zone for example some of the railway stations residential zones or some of the hospitals schools and in these areas honking should not be allowed or this area remains as the quiet zone so this is known as zoning another way is to planting or planting of trees because plants or trees they are also soft materials they can easily absorb the noise and in that case again planting of trees will help in reducing the noise pollution and finally there should be legislative measures that means there should be strict laws of using the loud speakers amplifiers and many more devices banning of the high pressure horns in the automobiles then framing a separate noise pollution act so this should be done to control the noise pollution thank you For more study materials like learning materials, like MCQs, like other question answers and problems related to your coursework, please visit admirals.tk.